I'm Dr. Dave Seftel with the Macula News and the Macula Degeneration Foundation. We're here today with Rich Amador from Canon, and he's going to tell us about the exciting new features in their software for the non metriatic retinal camera. Rich? Yes, thank you. Um, there's uh, several new features in Image Spectrum version 5. Uh, when we started the development version 5, we uh, took a view of uh, HIPAA compliance as kind of a key cornerstone to the release of, of version 5. So several things that deal with uh, privacy, security of patient health information are built into the system uh, from the ground up. Things like a, a very thorough audit trail of who's had access to patient records. Uh, disaster recovery is covered with uh, our archive solution, uh, something that uh, version 4 didn't have, uh, as well as just managing uh, the patient list in a much more efficient manner, uh, as well as uh, overlays, uh, autofluorescence images overlaid over color images. So several new features have been uh, released in just in the last couple of weeks. Are there any resolution enhancements? Uh, as far as resolution goes, uh, we're still operating with an uh, 18 megapixel camera, uh, so resolution has is, is been maintained. Excellent. Tell us about this overlay software. Yes, um, one of our newer cameras, the Canon CR2 Plus AF, uh, provides autofluorescence. And so we're taking the autofluorescence image and overlaying that over the color. And we can vary the opacity so that you can see the subtle changes between the two images. Oftentimes, you're not going to see anatomy in the color image, but you clearly see it on the, uh, on the FAF image. So um, varying the opacity, you can better appreciate um, where it is anatomically over the two images. That's very impressive. Thank you again. Rich Amado from Canon. Thanks, Dave. We're here with Dr. Ben Zerth from Rutgers New Jersey University Medical School. And he has pioneered the use of non midriatic retinal cameras for wide base population screening. Today he's going to tell us about some innovative new features in the new Canon non midriatic retinal camera feature set. Good afternoon. Uh, we're very happy to talk about uh, the innovations where we can mix color photography, do red, green, blue separations to see the different layers in the eye, and then follow that with uh, autofluorescence. Autofluorescence, we're looking at lipofusion. We're going to capture an image, and I'd like to demonstrate a particular case we just did today. 37 year old male. Uh, he's from Latin America. He's never been to an eye doctor and was complaining of small flashes. And so we uh, captured the first image and uh, we'd like to show you that uh, first image. So what we did is we uh, brought the patient in. This is a non-midriatic image. We captured the non-midriatic image, wide field, 45 degree, optic nerve, macular arcades. And we noticed that there was a small area that was uh, yellowish. We magnified that so we could see there's an area of disturbance and we did the fellow eye. We noticed a very very small change and now to confirm that there is some sort of presence what we did is we actually performed an autofluorescence and the autofluorescence is looking for lipofusion and in the lipofusion imagery we're going to be able to capture an image with 300 watts second non-mid and be able to depict these small areas of change. What we're looking for is a diffuse ring around this area which tells us that it's a progressive event. So that means that we can anticipate that this is an active and not just a passive uh, problem we're dealing with. We did the fellow eye and very interestingly we can pick up a similar but less of an area and then we followed that with a visual field Right eye demonstrates a fairly normal field. Left eye exactly the area that the autofluorescence picked up and was able to demonstrate that he has vision loss in this area. We then, if I can just do this really quickly, we then did uh, OCT. And in the OCT, we're able to pick up the series attachment really, really clearly. And we can see there's actual disturbance all the way around. In the fellow eye, where we picked up all these small disturbance in the autofluorescence, 
we can now pick that small disturbance up right here. So with the autofluorescence, it allows us to really depict and, and pick up the small changes and take action instead of waiting for uh, vision loss. That's a very powerful new feature. It is. Uh, it actually uh, is in many ways in cases with uh, autofluorescence looking at AMD, we're able to determine is this AMD going to progress rapidly or slowly, depending on the type of banding we have around the area of pathology, we're able to predict and take action and not have to wait. So all of this is to try and prevent vision loss. Extraordinary work. Tell us about your screening program in New Jersey. How is that progressing? The screening program, actually, once we started to do autofluorescence, we went from a 17% pickup rate in the general population. These are in the soup kitchens, churches, schools, uh, to 23% pickup rate with autofluorescence. We recently added OCT to that. So we have a lineup here where we have, we're gonna do uh, uh, auto refraction, we're gonna do tonometry, photography, then we do OCT, and in the photography we'll do both color, red, green, and blue, as well as OCT. And now we're able to pick up the small changes and make accurate referrals instead of sending the patient to general ophthalmology, we can now send them for diabetes or maybe AMD, glaucoma, any type of changes because we're far more accurate. Also, as in the past, we use this type of table where we can actually do any patient that is up to two meters, six feet tall. So everyone stands. So because we're standing, we don't have that patient time loss. Typically, 40% of the time is lost sitting. So we can just have the patient stand from one stand, one machine to the next, come out here, we review, give them a, a result. We average 12 patients per hour, and uh, we can refer the patients immediately on site. So it's a very powerful all-in-one solution for white-based population screening. Exactly, but it's also an educational program in the sense that we bring along with us medical students mm -hmm. that are not yet decided which uh, area that they're interested in, and now we expose them to the world of ophthalmology with actual hands-on. And so we've seen several of our medical students that actually chose ophthalmology after doing a, a year session with us. Extraordinary work. Thank, Thank you. you again, Professor Zerf. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. What we'll be doing now is walking through the traditional screening process that Dr. Zerth uses on his patients in New Jersey. Well, thank you. We're going to have you come over here. And the first item we're going to do is we're actually going to do tonometry on you. That's the first setting. So I'll have you come in here and place your chin. We're going to bring the instrument to your eye. And all what we're going to do is set you roughly. I'm going to press and it's going to do the measurements on, on their own. It's going to move over on its own. It's going to find the eye. It's going to set itself. Once it sets itself, it did the reading. It's going to print out. We're going to have the patient move over. As we're doing that, the, the image is being transferred over. I'm going to have you sit coming in. It's going to do refraction. And it's going to switch eyes as soon as it's done. So it's going to move over now. It's going to do the left eye. It's going to center itself, so it's completely automated and we're going to be able to get the measurement printed out. So we have both of the uh, measurements out. I'm going to have the patient move over and I'm going to have the patient come in. We're going to have the patient cover their left eye but keeping the eye open. 
and all I'm going to do is have him look straight. What I'm doing is I'm having him cover the uh, left eye so he has no accommodation because we're doing this non-midriatically. The camera is going to self-align itself. It's going to then, okay, it's going to now look for, for the back of his eye. Very good. And we're going to capture an image. And we have captured the image of the eye. So essentially what we have now is the instrument now brought over the results of the tonometry that is here. And then we can open up the tonometry. So I have the results right eye, left eye. So as we now finish doing the results, the information that we printed out from the instruments are now inputted automatically into the software. I can now blow this up. I can see what was done in right eye, left eye. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to go and take a look at your refraction. So I have the total refraction here. Right. Then once I'm done with that part, I can go and take a look at the, uh, the retinal image. So I'm looking right. at your optic nerve, cup to disc ratio good, AV ratio good, macula is good. So then I would do the follow eye, then I would do the auto fluorescence, and we're done. Once we're done with this file, uh, the, the beauty of the program is once this file is done, mm -hmm. it can be uploaded directly to our clinic, and the physician on the clinic side can see what we're doing. Fantastic. So the referral process is fast and efficient. Remarkable. Thank Excellent. You. A very, very impressive display. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you.